Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone. So this is what we're gonna paint today. A super fun little Irish gnome. Um, for now, actually, all we're gonna need is our canvas of any size. I'm using eight by 10 inch canvas, so fairly small. And you're gonna need a pencil because we're gonna start with sketching our gnome. So we're gonna sketch the outline and then we're gonna go through all our paints and everything else that we're gonna need. So for now, just make sure you have your pencil, but generally we only use primary colors. So again, you will only need primary colors unless you prefer to have pre-mixed colors, in which case that's totally fine. It is whatever your preference, your personal preference is, you can use that, that's no problem. Actually, I'm going to switch them. I'll do them this way. All right, so if we're already, and I just want to mention up front, if this is your first time joining us live, um, the video is going to remain right here. You can come back and do it anytime. So if something comes up, you can do the entire painting today. Come back anytime. It's going to be right here, and you can do it whenever you're ready for it. So it's not going anywhere. And um, when the video is not live anymore, when you know, it's fully recorded, then you can pause as well and make it a couple day project and rewind and rewatch sections of it. So that's also an option. I'm pretty sure you can also scroll back even as we are live, you can still rewatch sections of it. All right, so what are we gonna do is we're gonna start by identifying where the middle of our canvas is. Because for me, my beard is actually positioned literally right in the middle. So do you see right in the middle of my canvas is my beard. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna decide where my middle is. And I'm going to put something that looks like an upside down um, drop, like a teardrop. So this is approximately the middle of my canvas. So I'm just gonna do that. Do You see, I'm adding almost what looks like a little chunky wide upside down teardrop. And this is just the base for our beard. And of course we can edit it. We can make it bigger, smaller. We can add it the shape and so on. So and once I have this, I'm gonna add a nose. Nose is gonna go, it's gonna be a little circle or you can do oval right at the top, overlapping the edge a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a hat. And a hat, again, you can make it fairly simple like I do, or you can make it a little more elaborate. So I have just, a simple curve on the side and then another curve this way. So my head is fairly simple. There are no crazy shapes to it. But if you wanted to, you can make your a lot more complicated like that. So that's an option too. Again, totally up to you. Feel free to customize it however you want. And then I'm gonna add a little pom pom on the end. Little pom pom. All right, and I will also take an eraser. I'm gonna erase all my unnecessary lines. If you guys painted with me before or drew with me before, you know that when I do my sketching, I try to I like using a lot of lines and then I kind of choose the one that I love the most and I erase the rest. So that's what I'm gonna do right now as well. Okay. And then I'm gonna move on to the body. So for the body, you can start with the actual jacket. So this part, the body part, and it's gonna start, I would say at about edges of your beard, maybe a little bit further inside, just a touch. And we're gonna add something that looks almost like a bell, you know, like a bell bottom. So it's uh, a bit more narrow on top and it gets kind of wider as it goes down. So something like that. 
And then I'm going to add a little opening in the middle. Okay, now that I have that, I'm gonna add the hands. So this one is just a little curve on the side. And it's, it's not gonna go all the way down, so it goes until around here, and then I add a little mitt. So something like that, more or less again. And the second one, it should start at around the same level as the first one. Hi, Mickey and it's going to be curved towards the other side and again a little mitt on the end And then I'm going to move to our boots. So for our boots, um, I'm going to start with just putting a line a little bit down from the bottom of the shirt. So that's the top of the boot, that's this part. And I'm going to do the rest of the boot. Little boots, little shoesies. And a similar one on the other side. All right, so I have two shoesies. And now I would like to add my belt. So the belt is going to go somewhere right here. Not a belt buckle. Ta-da! Belt buckle. And the last thing that I want to do for, um, well, I mean, there are still a couple decorative things, but from the larger things, I actually want to add it a bit to the shape of my beard and make it a little more interesting. So now that I have positioned everything, I'm going to add it make it a little fluffier, a little more zigzaggy on the edge, just so just that it looks a little more interesting versus straight lines. So that's it pretty much for my gnome. Now I have to add a decoration on a shirt, clouds, rainbow, pot of gold, and um, my leaf. So what do I start with? I mean, it doesn't matter, whatever works for you. Let's start with a little decoration. I'm going to add three leaf clover here. And I'm going to place a four leaf clover in his right, in his left hand. Actually, I'm going to make his hand maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, this is better. That's better. And I'm going to start the clover somewhere here. So it's going to be four heart-shaped leaves. So one, two, three, and four. Ta-da! And you can add um, a stem from it to it. With his hand, so just a little stem. Ta da! It is done. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to my two clouds. So they're just literally gonna be around the section, around the belt section in general. I mean, it could be higher, it could be lower, but I don't wanna put them too high. I don't wanna put them too low, lower his boots. I don't wanna put him lower than boots. So I'm gonna put them somewhere right here. Um, yeah, so just two little pretty clouds. They can be bigger or smaller, it doesn't really matter. They can over, no one can overlap your cloud so they can go a little bit behind him or stay completely on the side of your nose. Either is fine, it's whatever works for you. So you see two little cute clouds. And for the rainbow, I don't want to fully... Okay, actually, before I do that, let me, guys, just to clean up a little bit my over here, because I have so many lines here, and I know once I start painting, it's gonna, it may get a little muddy. I don't want my rainbow get muddy, so I'm just going to clean up my lines here to make sure the pencil doesn't smudge when I start painting, so it doesn't look too muddy. Okay, that's better. So for the uh, for the rainbow, I don't I don't really need to you know outline a line for every single color. It's more like I want to start I want to um, sketch sort of a beginning of my rainbow and the end of my rainbow, just to know the general curve and the positioning. I don't need to sketch everything. So I would say I would probably start somewhere right here. But again, whatever works for you. So somewhere there and it's gonna go pretty far. Okay, I think this is good. And again, notice how lightly I'm doing this because we don't want our, again, Rainbow is so nice and light, so we don't want to have any harsh lines there. And then the last couple things that I have left here is my pot of gold and some gold coins. So you can position your pot of gold and your gold coins wherever works for your painting. So just look at your painting and see if there's a corner or a spot that maybe doesn't have um, a lot going on and something is lacking and you feel like it could be added there. Go for it. So for me, maybe I'll add it this time here, a little bit lower. So let's go somewhere right here. Right, some shadow underneath it and the lots of gold coins. Some bigger, some smaller, wherever you want to position them. There's no particular positioning. Honestly, whatever you want to do with them. And ta-da, that's pretty much all our outlines. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes and I'm gonna go get my paint. And for paint, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using primary colors, which is white, black, red, blue, and yellow. And out of them, I'm going to be mixing all the colors that you can see here.
If you prefer to use premixed greens and oranges for the beard and you know all the other colors, it's no problem. Just choose your favorite colors or just color match the image, whatever you prefer. But if you painted it with us before, you know we only use primaries for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, it is cheaper. We don't have to, you know, continue telling everyone to buy new colors every single time for every single painting. You can just get one set of colors and with that you can paint anything that we ever painted. So basically you can use our tutorials with just primaries. You don't have to continue buying colors. And the reason number two, it's actually good. It's good for learning. It's good for learning how to mix things. All right, so here are my colors. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start, do you see my background? Super, super lightly gray. So this is what I'm going to start with. And let's talk about brushes and everything else. We know the paint we're gonna be using. You, of course, you're going to need um, water. You can paint without water. You're gonna need a paper towel or a usable fabric cloth, whatever you have or whatever you prefer. And you're gonna need a couple different brushes. It's totally up to you whether you want to use a pointy or square brush. So you can use something like that, which is a pointy brush. You see it's rounded brush. Or you can use something like that, which is square brush. So you're going to need one of them, the larger one. Both of them are large, by the way. So one of those for the background, either square or pointy, doesn't matter. Again, I'm going to go with pointy today. But doesn't matter at all. And... Hi, um, you're gonna need medium brush. Again, it could be points, it could be square. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, for all the medium size details, whatever works for you. Pointy works better, great, use pointy. Square works better, use square. So this would be my medium, either pointy or square. It's not really a medium brush, it's a bit on the smaller side, but because my canvas is very small, it's gonna be serving as a medium for me today. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go with yet, I'll decide. And you're gonna need a small detailed brush as your little finisher brush because there are lots of fine details on this painting, so we can definitely need this brush. And the most important feature about this brush is it needs to have a nice pointy tip. Especially when you dip it in the water, the tip should look almost like needle, needle-like tip because there are quite a few details, so we need that, it's important. All right, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else that we will need. So I'm gonna start, as I mentioned earlier, with my background. I'm gonna take my large brush, and I'm gonna make this gray. So it's not dark or even medium, it's still a light gray, because I want my background as light as possible. So it's a super light gray. I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. You always wanna mix light colors starting from white. So I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. I'm gonna add a smidge of black. I'll mix it up and ta-da, that's my light gray. Notice it still is very light. And with this gray, I'm gonna go right at the edges here. So do you see, I'm mimicking the shape of my rainbow. And I'm coloring my edges. Okay, now that I colored a little bit of edges to the same color, I'm adding lots more white, or you can even just choose pure white. So do you see, I mixed it to a consistency of like extremely light gray this time. You can barely tell there's any gray in there. It almost looks like white. And with this color, I'm gonna color it in going forward here. And I'll mix it in a little bit. So there's a nice smooth transition. Technically, you can just color it white if you want. 
and make transition from dark gray into straight white versus light gray. But I like using light gray just so my clouds actually pop up and look whiter. If I use straight white on the background, my clouds are, they're not gonna pop as much. Yes, I, I can add some gray around them, but I still prefer to add my background, um, make my background very light gray, just for the reason that my clouds pop a little more. And notice I'm not being extremely careful around my gnome or anything else. I feel, feel free to, you know, go over, over, go over some lines here. It's not a big deal because we will add everything else on top. The goal is mostly just to cover up the background. And here for the bottom part, I'm literally gonna take that light, light, extreme light gray, extreme light, almost white. And I'm gonna color everything here with it. And then once again, while all of that is still wet, I'm gonna make a slightly darker gray. Not dark, just slightly darker. And you can use the same brush or you can use smaller brush for this. And I'm gonna add some reflection very lightly. Some reflection of the clouds. Reflection or shadow, whatever that may be. And some of the gnome's boots. See, it should be nice and light, and because we're adding it on wet, it also blends really well. Do you see? So that's what we want. And if you want to darken up your edges even more, you can. But again, keep in mind, it's just the edges, really. Don't bring it too far in here. Ta-da! I like it. This is looking nice. And I'm just gonna give it a tiny little minute to dry because I don't wanna be um, working on my rainbow until my background is a little bit drier and the same with clouds. I don't really be wor wanna, wor wanna be working on any of it until my background is a little bit drier. And it, it, my paint dries extremely fast so it wouldn't take long. And I can have a sip of my tea. And as that's drying, and by the way, guys, if your paint is on a slower drying side, if it's just a slower drying paint, um, or maybe you have a very thick layer, you can always blow dry it. You can use a blow dryer and just help yourself out a little bit with a blow dryer. But I'm just gonna keep mine as is. Um, and let me tell you what we're gonna do next. Next, we're gonna move on to a rainbow. As soon as this dries up a little bit, we're going to move to our rainbow and I'm going to work my way from the inner color towards the outer color. So I'm going to make this light pink, add it in. Then I'm going to make some light orange, add it in. Then I'm going to add some light yellow, add it in. Then after yellow, I'm actually going to move straight to blue. And my yellow and um, blue are going to mix up and create a green. But if you want to, you can actually manually create a green and add it. And then I'll add my purple and I'll finish it up that way. And after I have um, my rainbow, then I'm going to move on to my clouds. So I'm working in an order from what's the furthest thing from me towards what's the closest thing from me. Then I'm going to move to my clouds. I'll work on my clouds a little bit. And then after that, I'm going to start working on my gnome. And on my gnome, everything here is going to have more than one layer. So I'm actually gonna start by just putting one layer of green on everything, let it dry, and then on a second layer is when um, I'm gonna start different shade, adding different shades of green. Do you see there's lighter green, there's darker green here, there's some details, and so on. 
And only once our green is done and finalized, that I'm going to be adding all those decorative elements, such as gold here, um, buckle, belt, some details on the boots, gold here, which will have more than one layer as well, and beard. So beard can be done about the same time as the green outfit as well. So I hope this makes sense. But feel free to ask questions if it doesn't. Okay, so I think my paint is getting to a good place where I can start working and adding my rainbow. If the, Another thing I want to mention, if you find that your background is a little bit too dark because you want your rainbow to pop really well. So if you find that if your background is a little bit too dark, you can just take some white. But where you're going to be lightening it up is from the middle here. Out. So really mostly underneath the rainbow, because for rainbow to read, it can't be on a too dark of a surface. For me personally, I'm, I'm still happy with this. Uh, but if you want it lighter, if your gray is darker than mine, you can lighten it up a bit. All right, I'm going to move on to my pink. I'll scoop some white on the side. I'm, I'm, I'm going with the very pastel colors here. So you can follow me on that and do very pastel colors as well. Or you can go a little brighter. It is totally up to you. Whatever works for you. Again, I'm sticking with the pastels here. So I made my light pink. And then I'm going to go right around where my first line would be. I'm going to add and notice I'm not being very careful with, again, outlines. Just going right over things because I can add them on later. Ta da! That's my pink. Then I'm going to move on to my light orange. To, you can literally just take some yellow and add it to your pink, and you're going to get orange. I'm going to go with this color next. It's like a nice peachy color. Again, up to you whether you want to go with pastels. You know, I might even darken up my pink. That Now that I added orange, it looks a little too light for me. So maybe I'll make a slightly darker one. And enhance it a little bit. Right, then I'm going to go with my yellow. Same thing, I'm going to take some yellow, some white, mix them up. And this time I'm going to add um, maybe twice the width because I want my blue to overlap to create green. So I'm adding it a little bit wider than what I want to see in the end. All right. After that, I'm going to make my teal. So I'm going to scoop some white on the side. Not teal, just light blue. It's going to turn into teal anyway because it's near my yellow. So I'm going to add some white, add some blue, mix them up, make a nice, fairly light shade of blue. I'm going to position it first right beside my yellow. And then I'm going to bring it a little bit into my yellow. And you see, wherever my blue overlaps my yellow, it creates a nice shade of green. And the last color that I'm going to finish up with is going to be purple. 
So I'm going to wash my brush, dab it off on a paper towel. If you want it to the same blue you just used, you can add a little bit of red. You should end up with a nice, really light purple. Because purple, light purple is blue, red, but it must be on a pinker side. And white. And with this one, I'm going to finish up my rainbow. Beautiful. It's a really nice rainbow. And if you want to soften up your edges, especially pink, it doesn't need to really soften me up. It's fairly light. But if you want to soften up your purple, you can wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and then with a clean, slightly wet brush, go right over the edge where your purple ends and kind of smudge that edge. You make it a little softer, a little more blended into background. But only if you want that look. If you would rather actually prefer a bit more harsh look, don't do it. I'm only doing it because when I was originally making it, um, I did do that because I wanted my rainbow to be a little softer. I might even do that for my pink. Not that I need to, but since I'm already doing it, I might as well, right? You see, it, got, it gets a little bit softer. And that's my rainbow. I might even take a smidge of white and add it around my rainbow just to add a bit of lightness there. But again, all of this is so optional. Yeah, I like that. That looks nice. I'll do a little bit inside too. Awesome. And now I can move on to my clouds. So I'm just going to go ahead, take my large brush. I'm going to cover in my clouds with white on the inside. And you see that cleans them up because I wasn't careful when I was working around my clouds. So my clouds are a little muddy and that's okay. I'm quite all right with that. I know that it can always clean them up. So there they are, those fluffy, fluffy clouds. And while they're so wet, I'm actually going to add a bit of gray into them too to shape them a little more. And I'm going to move to my medium brush for this. I think I'm going to go with medium square. Again, not that it matters. And I'm going to take a little bit of a light gray. So again, I'm going to take some white, some black, mix them up. And this gray, I'm going to add a little bit of shaping to my clouds. Mostly on the lower side. Those are very nice and very fluffy clouds. All right, I hope everyone is doing okay. Um, as my clouds are drying up a little bit, I can actually add a bit more darker gray now around my clouds and underneath has a bit more of a shadow too. And you can use either small or medium brush for this. So again, I'm going to make a uh, great, that's a touch darker. I'm not aiming for a dark 
even medium. I just want it a bit darker than whatever you have going on. And I'm gonna take only a little bit on my brush. Just gonna go right on my clouds. A little bit underneath as well. A bit more of that little pathway. And if you want it, again, if you feel like it's a little too harsh, you can always wash your brush. Dab it off in a paper towel. Go around it and, you know, help it out, smudge it a little bit. I added some underneath that cloud. Now I'm going to add some underneath the little boots. Now underneath your gold coins, it's up to you. I wouldn't be personally adding it with gray there. I will add it there later with um, brown. But you could technically, I guess. All right, enough for me personally. I am quite all right with this one. Happy, this looks good to me. Don't want to be any much more. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to finish that, and then we're going to move on to our gnome, and we're going to start adding all those greens. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll try to help you out with whatever you may be wondering. All right, hopefully we have all of this. How do you guys feel? Ready to move? If we're ready to move, we're gonna move to our gnome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I would say a nice medium green. Whatever shade is your favorite shade, you can make that one. There's no particular shade you have to have. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna scoop some yellow. And I'm gonna scoop some blue. And a tiny smidge of white. That looks pretty medium-ish to me. And with this green, I am going to go ahead 
Actually, maybe I'll make it a little darker. That's still actually, once now that I started adding it, now it's a little light. So let's add a little bit more blue to it. I'll go right over this. I'm not going to be working around it. It's such a small detail. I find that it's not worth the effort, really, to work around it. so easy to just add it on top. All right, so that's my first layer on a hat, and now I'm just going to add a first layer on everything else that's green. So on the jacket. You can go right over the belt. You don't have to reserve space for it, unless you're worried that you're going to lose it and you feel like you'd rather not, then you can work around it. I personally feel like belt is so simple even if you lose it it's so easy to just set it on top so I personally don't feel the need to work around it but again up to you and you see first layer it's never that good it's a little streaky it's not perfect and that's okay we'll add more layers We'll fix all of that. And I'm going to add first layer on my four leaf clover here. I'm using still my medium brush, but you guys see for yourself what works best. I find that medium brush is hard to use. Use a small one. Small brush is always a good, safe choice for things like this. All right, and what am I missing? I'm missing the little boots. So I'm not going to add socks yet. But I will add a little boots. I need to mix a little bit more paint here. You may also need to switch to a smaller brush as well because there's some pointy little sections on those boots that I cannot get with my medium brush.
All right, and that's my first layer of green. And again, as I mentioned earlier, first layer never looks good. Very normal. So we're just gonna let it dry and then we're gonna add second layer. That's where it's gonna get so much better. All right, as that's drying, there are a couple other areas that we can work on. We can add first layer on our beard. Now we can add, for, we can add not just the first layer, but generally add our nose and the mitts. So we may as well focus there for now. So I'm gonna start with my beard. I'm just gonna take my medium brush and I'm gonna make a shade of orange. So you can make straight up orange of any shade. You can make more like a copper color. Um, so I'm gonna start by taking some yellow and red, mixing them up. We're starting with the base of yellow, notice not the base of red. And then add some red to it, not equal parts. So if you add equal parts, your red will overtake your yellow. It's just gonna look red. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it as well. See, this is a really nice, saturated, vibrant orange. But because I do wanna have a bit of a copper mixed into it, I'm gonna dim it down by adding a tiniest little dot of black. You see, I'm literally taking it on a corner of my brush. I'm gonna add it in just because I want it a little bit dimmer. I'm not trying to turn it into full on brown, which would happen if you had too much black. Just wanna make it a smidge dimmer. More like a rustic color. And with this beautiful color of your choice, for me, it's this color. I'm gonna go ahead and I will color in my beard. Again, I'll do it what I can with my medium brush. And if at point, if at any point I feel like the areas I can't get with my medium brush, I'll get them with a small one. Beautiful, that's a really good base. I like it. And now as that base is drying, I'm gonna move on to the nose and the mitts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make almost like a peachy color. You can make any skin tone color because that's mostly for a gnome skin tone. So Irish generally is like more of a pale skin tone, but again, you do whatever works for you. So I'm gonna grab, I'll do it with a small brush. Sorry guys, let's wipe this off. And I'm gonna start with a base of white and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red to make it like a peachy slash coral color. And then once we add white to it, it's gonna be just the right color. But we need this darker version too. So that's my darker version of this color. And I'll take some of it on the side and add some white. It's gonna be my base color. So now I'm gonna take my base color and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color the nose. And the little mitts. And right away, I'm going to take a little of this 
peachy orangey color. Coral-ish. I'm gonna add it closer to the edge of my nose and the mitts. Do you see? It creates a bit more 3D effect. Just make it looks more makes it looks more complex. Interesting color wise. And then I'm going to take straight white. And we'll add it right in the middle of the nose. Oops. Some more water on my brush that got in. I'll add some highlights on. The little mitt there. And the only other thing that I don't have on my gnome covered yet is going to be the little socks or whatever those are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking some white and coloring this whole section white on both sides. And then I'll take some gray. Any shade of gray will do. You can go medium, you can go dark, you can go light. Totally up to you. I, I would say medium is probably a good choice here. And all of that with a small brush, by the way. And I'm going to go on the sides with this and right under. And I'm going to do the same on the other one on the sides. And right under, and then I'm gonna wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and I'm gonna smudge it so it looks more like a nice shadow versus just straight up separated colors, right? You don't want it to look like white and separate gray, you want them all to blend into one another. So you want those legs to be darker right under the coat um, and on the sides to give them a rounded shape. And you want them to be lighter right here, right in the middle and the bottom. All right, and that is also done. So now I will probably give it another minute um, for my first layer of green to dry because it's not fully dry yet. There are certain areas, not many, but there are just a couple spots that are still quite wet. So I think I'm going to give them another minute to dry up a bit. Um, as that's drying, you could do nothing if you want, or I might take a little bit more white on my medium brush and just add a bit more fluffiness to my cloud, like a nice second layer of white in certain areas. You will see, we'll add a bit more dimension, we'll make it a little more solid, a bit more texture too. Yeah, they look better with every layer. And again, I'm still waiting for everything else to dry. Um, what could I do? I could add a little fluff here. Maybe I'll take some white. And on this little fluff ball. And then if you wanted to, you could take your small brush and some gray. Nice and fluffy. All right, we'll give it a couple more minutes. I'll just 
I guess, do nothing for a minute. Yeah, and we'll give you guys a minute to finalize it all. If yours, again, is still super wet, feel free to just grab some blow dryer and blow dry it to help it dry up. In my case, it's like 98% dry. I'm just waiting for like a couple little spots here and there. And the reason why I don't want to add second layer, even uh, when my first layer even a little bit wet, is because whenever the areas that it's wet, it's not gonna stick to it. Instead of staying as a second layer, making more solid and more pretty, it will lift up the first layer. So you're gonna end up, if you have like a little areas that are still wet, you're gonna end up with holes in a way. Well, that second layer will look solid and nice and great on the areas that were dry, but the areas that were wet, it's gonna lift them up and they look will look almost like holes in a way. So that's why it needs to be fully dry. Preferably, of course. And we're getting there, we're almost there. All right, guys, hopefully we all have that. Um, yeah, let's move to my green. Mine is dry, thank God. Those two little spots, they're done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna make the same green again. And then I'm gonna make darker and lighter version of it. So I'm gonna start with making the same one. So I'm gonna scoop some yellow on the side, add some blue and some white. I mean, if it doesn't match precisely, it's not a big deal. As long as it's a similar color, it's totally fine. And with this color, I'm gonna go ahead and I will add my second layer. Oops. Do you see how much better the coverage is on the second layer? So much better.
And then right away, before I move to any other areas, I'm gonna take my darker one and a lighter one. So for the darker one, I'm not adding any white. I'm literally just taking blue and yellow. And this time it's a lot more blue. So I'm not adding any black to it. As you can see, I can get a darker green without adding black by just using blue and yellow. If your green, if your blue, let's say, is not as dark as mine, so you can't get darker greens out of it, you can add a black. But I would say if you can get it without adding black, it is always preferable. I'm gonna add it here. And you can darken it up and lighten it up either on wet or on dry, it doesn't really matter. It is whatever works for you. Um, like I'm doing it on wet right now. Notice I started adding it right away, right? As soon as I added my color. So my first layer is still wet. Not first layer, uh, the first color that I added. The base green. But um, it, I find it's easier to mix this way. But if you find that it's not working well for you, you can let it dry and then add the darker color. It's totally fine. And for the lighter one, there are a few options that you could do. You could literally, if it's still super light, you could just take white and blend it in. But I like usually making lighter color. So I'll take some white, some yellow, some blue. This time I'm just taking bare minimum of blue. And with this nice light color, I'm going to go right on this right edge. And then I'll blend it towards the middle. Ta-da! My head is pretty much done other than a couple of fine details. Now I'm going to move to my shirt and I'll do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to start with my base green. Take some of that. Sure, let's move all of this this way. So I added the coat. Now I'm gonna darken up. So I'm gonna take my darker green. Now this darker green, and again, you can do it on wet or on dry. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna add some, add some right here. So just shaping it. I love how subtle it is. When you add it on wet, because it blends, right? So it's not so stand out -ish. It's a lot more blended. That's why I love adding it on wet. But again, adding it on dry is also great. There's nothing wrong with that. Just may need to modify the main amount of paint that you use. So if you add it on dry, you're going to use a bit less paint and more treated like a dry brush technique. Versus if you add it on wet, you can... It's a bit more paint. Right, so that's my darker green, and now I'm doing lighter green. So I'm gonna take some of this lighter green, and again, lighten up pretty much the opposite sections. And you can do it with whichever small or medium brush. I find that medium for me still really works pretty well here, so I'm sticking with that. But again, small brush is always a safer choice versus medium, so feel free to use small if that works better for you. So 
See, I'm highlighting certain areas. And then I'm going to move to my clover and my boots. Um, it doesn't matter where we start, really. We can start on clover or we can start on the boots. I'll make a bit more of my base green color. I'm pretty much out of it. And let's go on a clover, just because it's a little higher up. So we may as well. And then I'm going to take my dark color again. I'm going to bring it from the bottom, my clovers, clover leaves. If you want to, you could lightly, very, very lightly lighten up the tips of your leaves, but also you don't have to. And if you do lighten them up, make sure you blend them. Because there's still a design that I'm going to add, so I don't want it to clash with the design. I'm going to add a little stem too. Awesome, moving to my boots. And again, I'm doing the second layer with my base green, the medium green. I'm taking my darker color. and I'm darkening up a couple of spots. I darkened up those areas with my darker green. 
I'm going back to my lighter green. I'm going to lighten up the opposite areas. And I will also add a couple of stripes with my darker green onto my little socks here. If all you can fit is one stripe, that's okay. If you can fit two, great. If your socks are nice and tall, you can fit more, that's totally fine too. But just don't feel like you have to fit in two lines if they don't fit. And I'll also take a little bit of that green, the darker green, I'll add a little bit of that on, the sh on a, whether it's a shadow or a reflection. And there, just a tiny touch. All right, and now once again, I have to wait for all of that to dry because there's still fine, fine elements that I'm gonna need to add. Um, to all of this. And as that is drying, I will work a little bit on my beard. So for my beard, I'm going to make, I already have a base color. If you want to, you can add second layer in a base color. For me personally, I don't think it's needed. It doesn't look too streaky, plus I'm still going to add a lot of darker areas and a highlight. So I feel like in the end, once those two colors are in, it's gonna look really awesome. So I'm not really planning to do second layer. If you want to, you can. Again, it wouldn't be a bad idea. It always is a good idea to do that. Uh, but I'm gonna move straight on to my darker color and a lighter color. I'm gonna start with a darker one. So the same color that I use for the beard, I'm just gonna add a bit more black and a bit more red to it. So it looks more like a brown. And this color, I'm gonna start by going around this nose first. And then I'm gonna go from here down. I'm gonna add little streaks. You can even go a shade darker and repeat this again with a slightly darker shade if you want to add some more dimension. So I just added a smidge more black into my color. Notice it got even darker, so I'm going to add even more dimension. Right in a second layer with a slightly darker color. But again, it's not necessary. All right. And now I will do the opposite, so I'm going to do highlight. I'm going to start by mixing my color from scratch this time. So again, yellow, some red, and some white. I'm just going to add a bit more white to it. And it can be any shade of light or orange. So I think this would be great. Let's try it out. You 
See, I'm flicking that from the outside in. All right, that's looking great. I think I can move on to more detailed work now. And the first color that I'm gonna move on to is gonna be my black. So I'm gonna take a little smidge of black. I will water it down and I do that um, just to make sure my paint is nice and liquid, which will, will allow me to do, to make fine lines. When your paint is too thick, it's very difficult to do fine lines, even if you have a really great brush. So I'm not watering it down to like a transparent watercolor consistency, just enough for me to be able to use just the tip of my brush and do fine lines. And with this, I'm going to add a little line in between the hat and the nose and the beard, just like a very small shadow there. I'm going to add a little line, put that in between the sleeve and the mitt, and right here separating um, the sleeve from the jacket. Maybe one right here. Again, just highlighting, accentuating certain areas on the jacket. Right here as well. And I'm going to add my belt. That's the base for my belt. I'm gonna wait for it to dry before I add the buckle. But I can add a bit of separation here now too. On my little boots. And the last one is gonna be on my four leaf clover. So the same block right here. So flick outlining leaf of a clover and one in the middle for all of them. All right, we'll let it dry. There's still gonna be some white in there and there are gonna be a bit more um, details on that clover leaf. By the way, we can add detail now actually, but everything else we have to wait for it to dry. So for the details on the clover leaf, you're gonna take your light green or make it again if you don't have any, which is white, yellow, and blue. And I'm going to add, starting from the top of each leaf, from the middle top, a little line going down. And then from that line, I'm going to add lines towards each side. So like this.
Done. And again, we'll add white there, but we'll wait until it dries. As that's all drying, we can work on our gold pot of gold and the gold coins. So the pot of gold, gold is what I'm going to start with, and I'm going to make brown. I actually still have some brown from, you know, the brown that I added for the beard. If you have that, great, you can use that. If not, make a new one. Generally, brown is equal parts of red and yellow, and then you continue adding black. So red, yellow, and then black little by little until you arrive at the desired shade of brown, which can be any shade. So I'm gonna start with my dark brown. So I did the pot of gold. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of white and some yellow to my brown. With this color, I'm gonna add a highlight right here. So in the middle of my pot of gold. If you want to, you can pull in some oranges there too. If you have orange, oh, for example, I have a little bit of this orange. You could add that in just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm going to make my gold coin color, which is going to be like a light orange. You know what, I could technically use this, but I feel like it's not the right shade. So I'm gonna make a new one. I'm gonna start with yellow. I'll add just a little bit of red and some white. Now this is more of a color that I wanted. You see, it's still like on the orangey side, but it's a good mixture between yellow and orange. It's not necessarily pure orange. Could technically make it a little even orangier. And with this color, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna color in the first layer of my gold in a pot and little pom-poms here and all the gold coins around. If you can't remember where you position your gold coins, just position them wherever you feel like. All right, I added them there. Um, if your belt is already dry, you can add your gold buckle. If it's not dry, don't add it just yet, but we could add our three leaf clover on top here. Because your hat should be dry by now. Or if it's not dry, I would be very surprised. Right. And then to continue working on our gold, we're going to add brown to accentuate it. And also we're going to add light yellow inside to lighten it up. It doesn't matter which one you start with. I think I'm personally going to start with brown because I already have the dark brown. It's not dry yet. I may as well use it up. So I'm going to take just a little bit, a little smidge of dark brown. And then I'm going to add it here, just a little bit. I'm going to add it around the clover leaf just a bit. I'm going to go and add it around my coins just a smidge. 
see on the lower part. And also you can add that shadow slash reflection very lightly if you want it. Did you see I'm not, I'm not going too far with it, but I'm adding a couple squiggles down to make it look like whether it's a reflection or a shadow. And I'll, I'll highlight, I'll almost like outline my coins inside the pot too. You don't have to do all of them, but just some of them to separate it. And then I'll add the highlight inside my coin. So the highlight is just gonna be white and yellow. So just some white and yellow, super light. Just gonna add it like a little flick here and there. Look, this may even be a little too much. Oh yeah, that's better. A little less paint. I'm gonna highlight a little pot right here. And after that, I'm gonna finish with my final highlights, which I'm gonna do in white. So I'm gonna take just a touch of white. And again, I personally like to water down my paint when I'm making fine lines, because I find it so much easier to make fine lines when your paint is liquid versus trying to do it with thick paint. So I always try to water it down, but just to the right consistency. I'm not trying to make it transparent. And I'm gonna add a little highlight right on the tip of the head here. Right here. Just a little highlight on your clover on a beard. I'm gonna flick it from the bottom up very lightly again. Maybe on the edge here. Oh, sorry guys, I forgot my belt buckle. Oh my goodness. Whoop. Let's go back to my uh, gold color. Well, I have my belt buckle. That's not good to forget a belt buckle. Belt buckle is quite important. I don't want to forget it. All right, done. Go back to my white now. And with white, I'm going to continue adding the white some right here. Here. Some on my boots. Some on the cold. And some on the pot. Definitely on uh, gold coins as well, just like a little smidge on each. And around my four leaf clover. Now you don't have to go all around if you don't want to, but you can. There's nothing wrong with going all around either. Just see if it's needed. I would say I'm going pretty much all around. I wouldn't say I'm going 100% all around, but I'm adding quite a bit. All right, and 
Couple things that I have left, I have left a bit more darker shadows and I have left some stars on the background. While I'm still on white, I may as well add some stars. So they're hard to see, but they're there. Do you see there are a little stars and a little white dots? So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna take my small brush and some white. And with that, I'm gonna add my stars first. Stars are super easy. You put a dot and then from that dot you flick up, flick down. Flick to the left, flick to the right. And you can add as many as you want and wherever you want them to be. And then I'm gonna add dots. I personally don't spread dots evenly all around. I don't do that. I like the unevenness. I added some more in some areas, less in others. That's just what I like as far as look, but it's totally up to you if you wanna spread them evenly, go for it. I like more having some, some areas more concentrated, others less concentrated. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm adding my dots with a tip of my small brush. However, another really good way to add your dots is grab a brush that has a rounded back end. And just dip that back end in white and then you can dot it up that way too. Either works fine, it, I mean, it's a preference. I would say try both and see which one works better for you. And stick with that one. Right, and the only thing that I have left is a bit more intense shadow. So you can make, um, you can darken up your brown and you can use that. You can make just intense, more intense gray. You can even use straight black, but make sure you use it very lightly if you decide to do so. I'm gonna go with a bit more intense gray personally. And I'm just gonna add it even darker than that. Add some right here underneath this pot of gold. And a little bit underneath my clouds. Ta da! It is finished. They're both really cute. Two little gnome brothers. The only thing that's missing from this one is a signature. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put my initials. And after that, we are officially done. Happy almost San Paddy's Day, you guys. Hope you have an awesome plans to celebrate. Don't know what you're doing, but I hope it's really fun. Whatever you end up doing that day. And please feel free to share your results with us. We would love to see how they turned out. I will make sure to include um, a link in the description of this video that goes to our Facebook group, where we encourage everyone who participated in our tutorials to share the results so you can see, you can you know show off your version, and you can see how everyone else's versions turned out. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them there too. Uh, of course, you can ask them in comments. We do check comments, but just a heads up, not very often. We don't check comments very often because we get a lot of comments. So um, if you have a questions that are a bit more urgent, message us on Facebook or in a group, 
it will get back to you much faster versus you know leaving a question comment and that's pretty much it yay thanks for sticking around i hope your paintings look awesome and maybe i will get to see some of them later enjoy the rest of your night everyone bye guys <laughs>